another episode of community voices today we got a very special guest man we got a uh, andrew wiggins with us today so everybody clap it up andrew how you feeling i'm good man you know just enjoying during the off season you know grinding uh you know, so just enjoying life cool man that's the only way to do it cool so let's get right into it tell us about your your 22 dollar community uh initiatives Sorry, I was putting on some headphones in my bad. <laughs> all good, all good. Now, I was saying, um, tell us about your twenty-two dollar uh, community initiatives. Um, yeah, you know, it, it's something that I do, um, you know, just to give back, you know, to the communities, mm -hmm. and you know, especially <clears throat> back home where I'm from. You know, um, every point I score in the NBA, I donate twenty-two dollars uh, to a charity. You know, just to help kids, you know, with whatever they need, um, and especially in the, you know, the field of sports. Um, there's a lot of kids that, you know, um, aren't fortunate enough to have the equipment or yeah. or have the funds to play on the team or, you know, the equipment to be on the team. And, you know, this just helps them, you know, uh, find an easier way to be a part of something special. Yeah, for sure. And that's a lot of money. You think about it like an 82, you know, game season and you drop, you know, at least like 20 or so a game. You know, that's a lot yeah. of money added up. So, and I'm sure that goes a long way for the kids. I'm sure they appreciate that too. Oh, for sure. You know, for sure. You know, whatever I can do to put a smile on the kid's face and right. help make life easier, you know, because sports is something that, you know, should be available for, you know, everybody, no matter where you're from or in, you know, no matter any this, no matter the circumstance, you know, everyone should be able to, you know, have access to sports. Absolutely. And that's, you know, kind of goes hand in hand too with the fact that you're doing like basketball camps and you put them on for free for, for the kids. <coughs> Let's do that. Like, what made you, you know, come to that decision? Because I know a lot of people have kids paying all types of like thousands of yeah. dollars for camp. So, yeah, man, I, I got, you know, I've been fortunate enough to you know, be, in, be in a position where um, I have money. Yeah. You know, I, I couldn't see myself ever making a little kid spend money to come to that camp where I'm, you know, where I'm teaching and, you know, talking, I didn't, it made no sense, you know, don't get me wrong. Some, some, some kids might, some parents and <laughs> kids might have it like that, but you know, a lot right. of kids don't, mm -hmm. you know, and that 300, $400 for a camp, that's a lot, you know, right. that adds up, you know, so I can never see myself charging kids to play basketball. Right. To play so basketball. Where you, come from, where you come from too, you know, like they can't just throw yeah. $500 to go to a basketball camp, you know? Yeah. Yeah, especially, yeah, you know, we got it, you know, we got, I, I, I have it good, you know, I could never do that to nobody else, you know, that's just, that's just not who I am, you know, so I let them come for free, you know, we give them, you know, jersey and, you know, we give them some basketballs and, you know, a bunch of stuff and we just have a good time, you know, we teach them basketball and we, we just teach them about, you know, life in the basketball world. Absolutely. That's why you mentioned like, uh, you know, kids don't really have a choice as far as like, what kind of situation they're born in. So I think something for me that really like came to mind was just me growing up in New York City and how, you know, me living in the South Bronx and because of my zip code, someone who lives like in the Upper East Side or like, you know, Seoul or something, mm -hmm. their quality of education is better than mine just because of like the difference in neighborhoods. So mm -hmm. what are your thoughts on like something like that where just because of where you grow up, you know, your education yeah. might differ from somebody else. Yeah, for sure. You know, for sure. Um, you know, the money is spent in certain places, yeah. you know, and, <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, unfortunately for, you know, a lot of people, especially in the school system, you know, education is not, is not the same everywhere, you know, especially in the, you know, the poorer places, you know, right. and where I stand, I don't think it's right. Obviously, I feel like everyone should be held to a, you know, uh, a standard where everyone has, you know, good education, you know, no matter where you're from, whether it's, it's school, whether it's sports, whether it's, whether it's, you know, even outside of school, just being able to find places to go and learn, libraries, everything. Yeah. You should have, you should, everyone should be, everyone should have access to that. Yeah, that's the main thing, just access, because, you know, for me, I, we had to let's say like share one text one or two textbooks between like five kids and make copies 
of it and yeah. share amongst each other. Whereas like somewhere in Manhattan, everybody gets their own textbook to write in, take home. Mm. Also, because I got in trouble for writing a textbook, so they got to use it <laughs> next year. So, so I'm just like, damn, like you know, why can't? Especially with something so key and like crucial as education, why can't things just be on like an equal playing field for everybody, no matter what your circumstances? So hopefully, you know, things get changed somewhere down the line where mm-hmm. just because I live like somewhere that's not as, you know, affluent as somewhere else, yeah. is, that shouldn't affect my my learning, you know? Yeah, but hey, that's that's the world we live in, you yeah. know. And like you said, hopefully over time, you know, it changes. Mm-hmm you know, it's what's right, you know, and it's not what's happening. Right. And then lastly, too, the same thing with, like, nutrition, where you step outside, there's a bunch of McDonald's and Burger Kings in one place, then the next spot, you see a little more health food stores and juice bars and, you know, things like yeah. Less of the fast food, more of, like, the whole foods and things like that. So, yeah, what? That, that... No, go ahead. No, I'll let you finish your question. My bad. <laughs> so, like, and, and that for me too is just like you know crazy to see because you like, I, especially within the, the like the black community where you know diabetes is like such a big thing, and you kind of surround yeah. it with like the kind of food that helps that like, thrive. Mm-hmm. The community. So, what are like your thoughts on what can what can people do to kind of help, you know? level i want to say level the playing field but just you know give people more access to healthier food options because you know what you put in your body is a temple right so what you put in your body like you know your everything 100 percent. no just you know whether it's people you know giving back whether it's you know the the city trying to make an adjustment you know and and know what's going on because you know we're not dumb you know, we know we, we we know what's going on with all the all the bad negative stuff in the in the in the, in the neighborhoods, especially you know when it comes to like you said, food. Mm-hmm. You know, because food's a big part of uh, <clears throat> everything. Yeah. Um, and like you said, our body is a temple. And you know whether it's heart problems, diabetes, all that stems from what you put in your body. You know, and that's what they put in the neighborhood. They put bad food, bad quality of everything. So, right. um, but just the city, you know, waking up and, you know, people giving back and trying to, like I said, make adjustments and put better things, you know, in those neighborhoods for people. Yeah, for sure. Because, you know, I feel like you could just go downtown to, let's say, go to Whole Foods, but a lot of people just can't afford the time or the luxury to make that trip to do grocery shopping, especially when it's... Yeah. More and, and even spot. and even when you do, like you said, it's way more expensive. You know, mm-hmm. not everyone, not everyone has that. You know, they make that quality of food way more expensive than, you know, other foods because they want, you know, certain people to buy it. They want certain people to be allowed to, you know, get that. So, mm-hmm. and that makes the um, decision difficult because I can spend what was what's like a McDonald's meal today, like five bucks, and get like probably fries, <laughs> burger, soda. A toy mm-hmm. you know, that too, whereas yeah. like five bucks you go to like you know Whole Foods for example, you really get them like what a bag of a bag of apples. strawberries, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> something you know something like that you know. So I think just like outside of like the cost, it's just more so just giving people like fair access to the things like that because I it just because of my circumstance, I should not be able to you know live a healthier lifestyle and when it comes to food because that's something we all need you know. Yeah, exactly. You know, you, you can't help, you know, where you're from and, you know, people love where they're from. So right. Like you said, everyone needs a fair chance and whether it's food, you know, education, whether it's facilities, you mm-hmm. know, everyone deserves a fair, you know, quality, fair, <clears throat> fair access to all that. Absolutely. And then, yeah, last question for you. So uh, what's next for like the $22 initiative you have? Is that something you're just going to continue for, you know, the rest of your playing career? Do you see it evolving in some, some kind of way? Maybe it's like a thousand dollars a point. No, nah, not a thousand dollars a point. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's definitely something that um, I see myself continuing to do, you know, the rest of my career. And mm-hmm. hopefully as I keep going, you know, keep getting older, I can find different ways to add on to that. Right. Uh, whether it's, you know, money, whether it's resources, um, you know, it doesn't matter uh, as long as I keep adding on and, you know, keep 
you know, putting a smile on these kids' faces. You know, that's, that's the main thing, to find different ways to do that. Absolutely. And, you know, us at Finish Line and JD Sports, whatever you're doing, you know, we've been partnering with CA for mm -hmm. since kind of like the start of this. And shout out to Andrew as well for putting this together with you. And yes, you'd love to make a donation to your initiative as well. So, you know, just to help, you know, support what you're doing, especially when it comes to these kids, because, you know, they're literally the future and you got to make sure yeah. that. So we appreciate so to you for everything you've been doing. And, you know, the thing is, like, it's no one asks you to do it, but the best thing is that you want to do it. So and it comes on. Yeah. So kudos to you for sure. No, I appreciate that, bro. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, I mean, that's a wrap for this conversation. <coughs> um, I'm glad to inform the world of what you've been doing because I feel like a lot of these things kind of just go under the radar and people don't realize the work you're doing off the court. So, yeah. Yeah, no, I appreciate you, man. Thank you for, you know, rapping with me and, you know, getting to know you and just chopping it up. Absolutely, man. All right, cool. Thank you. Um, have a great week. And yeah, All right. yes, sir. You, you too.